Greetings YouTubers, I'm Wells and welcome to my very first YouTube tutorial. Now this tutorial is going to cover some of the more advanced things that you can do with voice attack. Um, now in order to do these things you're going to have to learn about these things called tokens. Tokens are just these little text strings that you can use to um, invoke values that voice attack is tracking for you. So, for example, this token right here, CMD, in, bra in these curly brackets, this token will return a value that is the string of your spoken command. So, if I say, which profile am I on? If I say deploy weapons, sorry, deploy weapons, deploy weapons, deploying weapons okay so this right here this right here deploy weapons is what is in here or is the value that's returned when you call this token and it's the same with all of these prefix will give you the prefix portion of the command so in this case it would be just deploy suffix would give you the suffix portion of the command so in this case it's just weapons text num what this will do is and keep in mind there are many many more tokens than these these are just the essential ones for what we're going to do today text num takes a, a variable so you give it some string variable that you've stored and it will remove all non-numeric characters from the text so you will be left with only numerical digits 0 through 9 well you know and you know 10 11 all that kind of stuff um, this token is an expression token it lets you do some really really neat things um, it's a little more complicated too complicated for me to really explain right now but I'll show you what kinds of things you can do with it later so we're going to start off with how to set up suffixes that you can use with multiple prefixes now I'm sure a lot of you already have figured out a way to do this and unfortunately if you're anything like me the way you did the first time around ends up with you having all of these um, repeats of suffixes one suffix for or one repeat for every prefix that that suffix can use and this works but it causes your command list to bloat very very fast as you can see so what we're going to do is something a little different so here in this profile you can see that I only have one weapon suffix however I can say deploy weapons oh I'm sorry it's it's not listening I can say deploy weapons deploying weapons retract weapons retracting weapons toggle weapons toggling weapons and they all work Now the way I have accomplished this is by using these tokens. Specifically in this case I am using a prefix token. So what I have done here as as you can see these are all assigned to the same prefix suffix group. They they need to be in order for this to work. But inside weapons you can see I have these condition statements where I'm using a combination of an expression token and the prefix token to so that my weapons command can dis figure out which prefix called it. So the way you set these up You, 
go down to advanced and begin a conditional if statement block. And you'll be given this screen, but it'll probably be on this tab. So what you want to do is you want to go over to text and you want to enter this token. Curly bracket, capital EXP, colon, and then within single quotes, quotes, you see the uh, single quotes there, you put the prefix to token, equal to, and then whatever the command word is. And, and this is going to be the word that was spoken, not necessarily, not the command name. So in this case, they're the same, but if I use some sort of dynamic option where I could say, um, you know, deploy or activate were both the same command, um, and I use a dynamic option to put them in the same command line, um, you would have to control for both of those. Um, so you would have to do this once for deploy and once for activate. But then it's just as simple as now that you now that you have the ability to get this information, you know which prefix actually called it. It's just as simple as setting up condition statements to say, well, if if the prefix was deploy, do this. If the prefix was detract or retract, do this. If the prefix was toggle, do this, and then end your condition blocks. Um, I use else statements here so that as soon as one of these is true, it, it, one, one of these evaluates to true, um, it'll just skip the rest of them, so it won't bother checking any of the rest of them. Um, oh, yeah, that's one more thing I forgot to tell you. This token, this expression token, um, doing a text comparison like this, it's going to return a value of either 1 or 0. It'll return 1 if they're equal, and it'll return 0 if they're not. So when you set up this condition, make sure that you have this set to 1. And that's it for multiple use suffixes. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. The next command, that, or not command, the next advanced feature that we're going to cover is advanced uses of dynamic options. Now, if any of you have never seen dynamic options before, um, basically this part right here is a dynamic portion of your command. So here between the brackets it says scan semicolon target. That means that I can start this command by saying either scan or target. And I can continue the command by saying either of these and finish the command by saying either of these, right? Um, another thing you can do is you can make part of these commands optional by adding a semicolon to the end, to the last word in the brackets. Um, this gives you kind of a, a blank uh, option, which means that you don't have to say anything. So if, if, if it was like this, I could just say next enemy or previous friendly or whatever, and um, as long as I had it set up properly, something would happen. However, I'm not going to do that because that's... yeah. So, with this, some of you may have noticed that if you, when you're using prefixes and suffixes, you end up getting into a situation where you can only link two commands together, but you want to try to create a more complicated command that requires three, four, maybe even five parts. Who knows? Um, and there is a way to do that. As you can see here, I have one command line right here uh, that will actually do very... Um, let's see, two times two... It, it should have eight... Uh, it should be able to do eight different things. So... If I say, scan next enemy. Scanning next enemy. Target previous friendly. Targeting previous friendly. Scan previous friendly. Scanning previous friendly. 
I can I can say them in any order, and voice attack knows which words I said. It didn't. It isn't just saying, "Oh, he said one of them." It knows which one I said. So here's how you set this up. Again, we are going to be using expressions. Expressions are very very powerful. So here, you can see the expression command. So I'm taking the full command. And then this part, like scan with the, an asterisk. What this does, the asterisk is a wildcard. Okay, like is it, it's basically looking through this string and seeing if this string is in there. Okay, and so by putting an asterisk at the end. It's um, it's a wildcard character, so it will as long as this scan is at the beginning of the string, and anything else is following it, it doesn't matter what what's following it, as long as scan is at the beginning of the string because there's no wildcard card before scan, this will return one. It's true. Otherwise, it will return zero. So we want to set a conditional statement so that if scan is in the uh, if the command begins with scan which then do something this is a little more complicated because it's a it's a compound command so you're going to have conditions inside conditions to do this but all you do is you start with the first the first block make a condition for it then you go to the next block, making a condition for it. Then you go to the third block, make a condition for it. So at this point, if in order for it to get all the way to this line, it has to I have to have said scan next enemy. So scan next enemy. If I get to this, so if I got here, but scan next or but I didn't say enemy well then that means that I must have said friendly so else scanning next friendly scanning next friendly and it just kind of works the same from there I will can I yes I will expand this a little longer a little further there you go you can see the whole thing um, so I'll leave it up for a second, pause the screen if you need to, take a look at it. But this is how you do complex commands. And additionally, you can create prefixes and suffixes that also include these dynamic options. And you can get really complicated. Have like a prefix with a, a prefix that includes three options and a suffix that includes another four options, and like mix and match how it, like you can do all that kind of stuff if you've got the time and patience. Um, the one last thing I'll show you is target alpha thirteen. Target Alpha 13. Targeting Alpha 13. Target Alpha 64. Targeting Alpha 64. And see, all of this is done right here in this single line command. This is using another form of dynamic option, but this is specifically for numeric ranges. You give it the start number, the finish number, and you, the, you separate them by two periods. Not three, two. And this is where that text num um, token comes in handy. What, as I said earlier, what this token does is it removes all non-numeric characters from a string. So when I say alpha 64, alpha 64. Maybe it's because the command's open. Alpha 64. 
Oh, right, target alpha 64. Target alpha 64. Targeting alpha 64. I'm so stupid sometimes. Anyways. So all this is doing... Um, one important thing about this um, this token, it, you noticed in expressions, you could, uh, instead of giving it a variable, you could give it a, you could pass it a token. Text num doesn't appear to work if you pass it a token, so you can't just pass it uh, the command token directly. You have to store the command token to an actual variable and then pass text num that variable. Um, which is what I did here. And then the very next, I mean, you can set up conditions so that it does specific things for specific numbers, but for the case of um, this demonstration, I just had my text to speech, oops, say targeting alpha, and you can use these tokens inside text to speech as well. So, that's how that works. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope um, I hope you were able to get some useful information out of this video. Uh, like, comment, leave your uh, let me know what you guys think.